Tov. Today's stuff is Daf Kuf Bem Zayin in Baba Basra. So we learn for Achenu Kol Beis Yisrael and Sulem Basar Vashivya. We're at the ninth line down on Kuf Bem Zayin Aleph, and again we're talking about the concept of Mat Lashchivmer, a man who's on his deathbed, and if he gives everything away, it's automatic. Meaning he just says, "I want." It's Divrei Shchivmer Akik Suvim Chsum Dam. It's as if written down and handed over. You don't need a special kinyan if he gives everything away. Of course, if he gives everything away and then he recovers miraculously, he can get everything back because he only gave it under the condition that we understand it. Like Umdana, we have a, a, he only have to understand that he's going to die. If he gave away part of his assets, not all of them, he kept something for himself, then the rules are different. <laughs> then <clears throat> if he dies, um, then Enochanami, whatever he gave away is given away. If he survives and the person, he, the recipient made a kinyan on it, the guy gets to keep it anyway. Amar of Zera. If if he recovers, I said, how do I say that? I say, if he dies, the guy gets to keep it. If he recovers and the man made a kenyan, he gets to, the the recipient gets to keep it. So we're at the ninth line, the end of the ninth line. Amarav, Amarav say, Amarav. And I am a shchimim in Torah. How do we know? What's the source in the Torah <clears throat> that a shchimim has a special dispensation that he's allowed to give something away without a kenyan? He just says it. Of course, there's Adam who <clears throat> testified that he said that. Uh, how do we know that if he just said something, it's considered given over? The parsha of, of Nachlus. We said that uh, when we hit the Bnei Stafcha, they complain, and then Moshe uh, consulted with God, and God told him that if you have a boys, the boy, if you have boys, it goes to the boys. If there's no boys, what's that lashon of Avartem? Just say it ain't low banim, ben ain't low Nachlus Olabito. What's that Havara? Yeshach Havar Harris is teaching you there's a different kind of a transfer. Shikazu, which is like this, that doesn't really need a Kenyan, it's automatic. Again, because as we've learned, the Kenyan that a person gets is Yerusha, is automatic, doesn't have to acquire, it, it's automatically his. If it's one child, obviously he gets everything. If it's several boys, then they have to divide it up, but it belongs to all of them as soon as the father dies without a Kenyan. So where do we get this idea? Because it says the word vavartem as nachl, so that it says if there's no boys, you give it to the girls, you transfer to the girls, is not necessary. So the avara, there's another transfer. She kazu, what's that? That's the source in the in the Torah. Now Tosus points out right away that this is not really a lima de orisa because number one, uh, as we'll see, the next opinion, the, the next few words of Rav Nachman of Rav he brings down a different pasuk. From this pasuk, in the same parsha, if there's no boys and there's no girls, there's no daughters, no sons, no daughters, then you train, you give it to the brothers. Again, then if you could just say, you could just say, the word nasatam is also extra. To teach you, there's a different, there's a different giving over transfer shikazu, which is like this, which doesn't require So these are the sources now. This is Rav Nachman who said this name, Rabbi Ravua. Tosa says, Rav Nachman and Ahmed Beis, that we're going to see later on today, says that it's only drop on It's only to cut her So how could he argue with himself? Here he says it's a Doraisa. It doesn't really mean it's a Doraisa. It means that it's an Asmachta. Everybody agrees that it's only, it's not Minat Torah, Dafka, Kamar. Rav Nachman, Gufa, Yisle, I'm reading Tosas now, the top Tosas. Lab Minat Torah, Dafka, Kamar. Doesn't that mean Lafka, Minat Torah, Minat Raisa? Rav Nachman, Gufa, Yisle, the Kamar, himself, the Enoch, Shel Torah, Basuk, Shel, they made it. The rabbis enacted it, made it like it did in Torah. El Asmachta, Behalm, it's just simply an Asmachta. It's a, uh, we, we, we have a, a hint in the Torah, as an we have something to rely on, a reliance in the Torah that gives us a hint at the idea of Shemira, but it's really only Rabbonim. So the Gemara now says, okay, if Nachman learns it out from Nasat of Snachloso, and Rab Zeir Amarav said, based on Vabartam, these are extra words from Nachman, Maita Melom Vartam, why didn't he use it for, why didn't he darshan also from Vartam? Vartam, the word Vartam transfer seems extra. And we boil the Rebbe, that's because Vartam uses it for Rebbe's Russia, teaching us that. A woman can transfer her Yerusha from her father over to a different tribe if she marries somebody out of the tribe, out of her own tribe. In all the cases, it says, if there's no sons, no daughters, you give it to the brothers, no brothers, you keep, you keep going on and on, you give it to the closest one. Each case, it says, when there's no sons, and it says, you give it to the daughter, it says, a different Lashon. To teach me, only in the parsha of giving it to the daughter does it say to show you that the only way you can transfer the Yerusha, 
the land from one shaver to another is via a daughter. Because since her husband, her son, or her, or her husband, her husband comes first. If no sons goes to the daughter, since they yarshin her, and if she's from a different tribe, if then her husband, then it'll get transferred to her husband's tribe. So that's the only way to transfer uh, Yerusha from one uh, from one tribe to transfer land from one uh, a tribe to another is via a daughter. If a daughter inherits from tribe A, marries somebody from tribe B, and then uh, either her husband or her sons inherit her. Well, so we learned that from the second time we talk about no suffering. Yeah, it's literal in the Torah. Right. So that what? Y yeah. They, they, they no, but here he's not. I understand. Right, right. The, but he said no, no, no. We, of course, we the basic idea, yeah, that they could. But the, the, here, he, the drush over here is this is the only way to do it. And the Havartam is teaching this is the only way to transfer from one to another is only via the daughter. Not that, that you could say you could learn from the daughters themselves, from the second yeah. generation they could do it. That's but this is that the only way. That's what he's teaching you here. That the only way to do it is via this. Uh, is via, via this. Um, right. This is the basic source itself. Maybe the story with Slavkot is simply an example of that. But here he's teaching you this is the only way it can be done. But Rav Zera, my time alone, why does Rav Zera, who we started off with today, saying you learn out from Vatim, why does he learn out from Unasatim? That word also seems to be extra. Sometimes you say a word like that, it says Unasatim, rather than just say, if there is no daughter, you, uh, then then nachlaso uh, la'achiv, right? If you rather than just say though nachlaso la'achiv, you say unasatam is nachlaso la'achiv. That's not really an extra word or a special kind of a word that you've learned out from. It that's normal to talk it that way. But is a different kind. Vartam is you transfer. Transfer is teaching you something. Transfer is teaching you. There's a different kind of transfer which is shemira. But Menashe bar Yirmiyah Amar Mehachem this pasuk pasuk in Tanach. In those days, Chizkiyo became deathly sick. Uh, came to visit him. So says the Lord, command your house. In other words, give them, uh, as we say in English, put your affairs in order, right? Command your household, uh, because you're going to die below, you're not going to live. So what do you see over there? All you have to do is command them. Tzav, but tzav all you have to do is tell them. It doesn't have to be written down. It doesn't have to be any Kenyan. Just, just uh, tell them. And, and if he was de deathly ill and he gave them uh, instructions, that's the uh, that's the uh, that's the So we have three drushes so far. Rami bar Yecheskel from a different pasuk. Pasuk in Shmuel says Vachitofel Ro Kilona Satsa. So Menachitofel advised Avshalom. How to take away the throne from David, and he wasn't listened to. At the end, he saw that his plan was not uh, adhered to, and it was going to fail. And then he would be part of the plot, and he would be killed. So he went home himself, and he took his own life. He saddled up the uh, the donkey. Basically, he went home, El Iro, to his city by Itzav El Beso, and he commanded his household, meaning he gave them last uh, instructions by Yichanak, and he hung himself. He committed suicide. The Tzavah Baalma, again, you see this idea, by Yitzhav Beso, all he had to do is give instructions. So interesting that they want to learn from a Pasuk in Tanakh, in Pesukim in Tanakh, rather than the first rushes. Maybe they'll say that Vavartim is not extra, and Satam is not extra, but here maybe from the, the story itself, you see, all he had to do is he commanded, in both cases over here, whether it was uh, whether it was um, the first one, Chizkiyo, or whether it was Achitofo, uh, they commanded that all you have to do is give a command, and that's um, right. Right. So here's here's the point. Here's the point. That's a good question. So the rush says you see over here that a person who is about to be killed or about to take his life is also as a lach like a shchimira. Interesting. Um, that um, even in a case he like that, right, right, right. Let's say a person's taken out to be. Hung by the government or killed, you know, whatever he's going to get. In other words, whoever is commanding because he's about to die doesn't have to mean he's sick. Doesn't mean he's about to die. That's good enough. So says the rush. That's a very good point that you bring up. That uh, that's that's good enough. Doesn't mean Dafka if he's sick means he's 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 uh, he's about to die. Give my wife a gift, right? 
uh, part. Yeah, 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 same thing, whatever it was. But the, there is a loch of Shkimra. Tana Baran. Shloshet Baran Tzvi Achisofel is Baran. They had a tradition that Achisofel, who knew he was going to die because he was going to commit suicide, commanded his, he, he gave three instructions to his children. Alti Machlokas. Number one, don't, don't, uh, don't start fights. Look what happened to me, right? Um, and he says, right, um, don't start a fight because uh, and you see what happened to me. And don't rebel against the kingdom, right, which is what I did effectively. And look what happened to me. Look what happened to me because of that. Uh, he took his life because he would have been killed anyway. And the third thing, he gave him another instruction. So those two things learned from my mistake. And the third thing he told him, if Shalatzeres, uh, if Shvuas, if, if there's clear skies at Shvuas time, zero chitim, plant wheat. That's a good sign for wheat. If things are clear, if it's if uh, Shvuas time is clear, plant wheat. He didn't say if it's clear. He said rather if it's cloudy, balu like a mixture, like partly cloudy. If there's clouds in the sky, then it's a good time because you'll have some rain, etc. Some say, uh, the said, name Yaakov, low borer, borer, mamish. When he said, whether you learn that if the si that it's clear, he didn't mean literally totally clear, skies are blue, no clouds, for low bolo, mamish, he didn't mean totally cloudy, ela, filu bolo. Even if there's, uh, if it's partly cloudy, veruch, svonis, man, shabaso, and the northerly wind is is pushing it, meaning it's pushing it southward, zuhu borer. That's, that's also good enough because the northerly wind We'll push it down, and that's also good. So it doesn't have to be clear, 100% clear. It doesn't have to be cloudy. Even if it's a little bit cloudy, but the northerly wind is pushing, that's also a good sign. So this idea about is the northerly wind good or the southerly wind good or the easterly wind or the western wind coming from the west, we learned this idea about the look, checking the winds and to determine what's going to what the uh, future climate's going to be, I learned this from Rav Yitzchak Bar Abdimi's uh, words. That's what I learned. The Amr Rav Yitzchak Bar Abdimi, First of all, he disagrees about uh, Shavuos. Shavuos is not the time when we are blessed with the rain. The time we're blessed for rain is Mashruach of Ragoshem, the end of. Yeah, yeah. He looked at the Almanac, Richard's Almanac. Yeah, this is Rav Dimi. So the Amritz of Adim, Motzai Yantav Achin Shalchag. You look at the at the end of Sukkot after we've uh, prayed for the rain, and that's when we're blessed with the rain, right? We're blessed with rain on at the end of Sukkot. Hakol Sofin La'Asham Rocha. Everybody checks the um, smoke of the of the wood pile in the base of Mikdash, right? How, how's that? How's that working? Uh, how How is that working? Now the uh, the smoke of the Yes, uh, some say, you know, that maybe, you know, we, we've had before that the Ashan that comes up from the Kohen Gadol on Yom Kippur yeah. goes straight up. Now, the Marocha also in some places, but maybe at the end of the Chag, maybe then they did look at it. They looked at which way the smoke was moving. Maybe it did move it. I call itself from the Ashan of Marocha, not the Klap itself. And if it's going towards the north, that means it's the southerly wind. The, so the wind from the south is pushing it northward. Aniyam Smechim. The poor are happy, and the, the landowners are sad. Why? Because there's going to be too much rain. That means that if there's a southerly wind, wind from the south, and uh, that's going to bring too much rain, so much rain that the uh, storehouse where they stored the, uh, uh, the produce would rot. Because too much rain, rain's going to rot it. It, didn't, it wouldn't hold. It wouldn't uh, wouldn't store well. So in that case, if this if the storehouses would not hold the uh, fruits, the produce properly, the uh, balabatim would have to sell it cheaply to get rid of it. They have they're overstocked, and that would be good for the poor people. So the poor people are happy, and the landowners are sad. Not the kavi daram. If the if there was a southerly wind, meaning if the uh, smoke of the marocha was going south. Uh, was going from the north, right? It was going from the north, pushing it south. Then Aniyam, that means that there's a northerly wind. Aniyam, let's say, then the poor are unhappy or sad. Because that means that there will be a smaller amount of rain. There will be rain. Things will grow, but there won't be that much. But the produce out in the fields 
will hold well, will store well. And if it stores well, the poor, the landowners are not forced to sell. They can keep the prices high. Therefore, the poor people are, ha- are unhappy and the landowners are happy. Not the Klabi Mizrach. Now that far is okay. In other words, he said, we started saying that Rababa said to Ravashi, I learned this business about the northerly wind, you know, that uh, he said if the wind is coming from the north, uh, that uh, doesn't, it doesn't be clear, even if it's cloudy, but the wind's coming from the north, that's a good sign. So, bar, that's a good sign, and you could plant there. It means the wind from the north is not bad. So we said before, if it's not the Klavidarim, uh, the Balabatim will be happy, like we just said now. That's when he said it, because it'll it'll be good for the produce. Okay, it'll be bad for the anium because prices will be kept high. It's good for the produce. Not the club. Now we get to the east and the west, which is going to be an issue here. Not the club. Let's say the smoke is going towards the east. That means it's being pushed by a wind from the west. Hakol smech, and everybody's happy. Why is everybody happy? Everybody's happy because that's going to be a very measured amount of rain. Not too much, not too little. So the prices will be average. And uh, the produce will be, it will be stored in an average way. Everybody's happy with that. Kapimarav, if the wind is coming from the east, going towards the west, how could it say everybody's unhappy? Why is everybody unhappy? So Rashbam says, because then there's no rain. If it's coming from the east, then there's no rain. Rashbam says, kula not save him. I'm looking at Rashbam, six lines from the bottom of the page. kula not save him. Because the easterly wind coming from the east, uh, that holds back the rain, then via Basaris and brings famine, the ochre guttle, and great inflation. And it'll be a very, very expensive. Prices will be very high. Well, Paris Karka and Sofa, nothing grows well. Alma Mizrachas Koshim are of us. So he says, therefore, you see that an easterly wind is bad and a westerly wind is good. That's how we're learning now in Rajba. So the Gemara now asks back in the Gemara for a mini Mizrachas Lolim Yafa. Easterly wind is always good. Maravas lom kasha. A westerly wind is always bad. Ruch svonis, a northerly wind. Yafa lechita and vishashi vishlish. A northerly wind is good for wheat if it's grown a third already. But kasha lezaisim is bad for olives, from which we make oil, olive oil. Vishashi nitzu. Bad for the olives if they blossomed already, when the time when they blossom. That's a northerly wind. A southerly wind, bruch dromis, the opposite. It's bad for the wheat, if it's grown a third. The yafal is asymmetric. It's good for the oil, when they blossomed already. So a southerly wind is good for the olives and the olive oil, and a northerly wind is good for the wheat. You know how, what's your, what's your uh, way to remember that? A sign for remembering that a northerly wind is good for the wheat and a southerly wind is good for the olive oil. The shulchan of the base of Migdash, which holds the lechem upon him, the bread, that's in the north. It comes from the north. That's to remind you that if the wind comes from the north, that's good for the wheat, for the bread. The menorah is in the southern, in the southern side of the heichel in the base of Migdash. Why? To remind you that a southerly wind is good for olive oil. So, so But what do you see over here? That an easterly wind... We said it, what it, that's in terms of the north and the south. But we said at the beginning that the easterly wind is good, the westerly westerly the wind is around. bad, the other way around. So it's a stira, that, right? So before we get finished the kasha, he says, the simon is shulcham et safam umenor bedarm, high mar day. The northerly wind increases its own, the bread, the, the wheat, the high mar day. And the southerly wind, which is which uh, is symbolic of the menorah, that increases the oil. But we have a stira here. The first price is mashma that the east the easterly wind is bad and the westerly wind is good and now we see the opposite lokasha halon balahu. So way the Rashbam learns is that the second one that talks about the easterly wind being good and the westerly wind being bad. The way the Rashbam learns is the easterly wind he said doesn't bring rain. So halon us in bubble we don't need the rain. The rain we are in the uh, bubble is a low lying area with tremendous amount of irrigation just from the Euphrates, et cetera, and the Tigris and all the rivers there. So we don't need the rain. So for us, an easterly wind is good. We don't want too much rain. Too much rain will ruin the crops. Halu and Eretz Yisrael, where they don't have a lot of rain, they, uh, they for them, the easterly wind is bad and the westerly wind is good. That's all good according to the Rashbam, who learns that the easter, easterly wind brings no rain and the westerly wind brings a good amount of average rain. But Tosis, the third Tosis over here says, no, 
He says, Peter Shabbat Shmuel, the third Tosus is the last Tosus on the page. Peter Shabbat Shmuel, Durch Mazbachas Monasa, Matav Akasha. We learned back in Lo Yachpur about, you know, about over a hundred, you know, like a few, many months back. The Rachamayim Motzek, Zoom, the Rachmas Rachas, Mashmash, and Mavia Mayim brings too much rain. Alkei Nira, Lafaris, so as Tosus learns, the Mavia Mayim, it brings rain. The, the easterly wind does bring rain. El Shabbat Shmuel, if it's good for Eretz Shmuel, Uba Bavel Kasha, Bavel it's bad. Shars Mulchachas Mulehamai, Mashbirsh Kapi Marav, Hakom Hakol at Saving Lafisham is Rachas Monas Mutter, because what? Because if it's if the if the if the smoke is going towards the east, that means the the wind is coming from uh, if the smoke is going towards the west, meaning the because the uh, the wind is coming from the east, everybody's unhappy because there's no rain. He loyal of Farshke, he should have said that El Lafisha maybe my Yosemi died. So he learns the opposite. He learns that the easterly wind brings too much rain. And the westerly wind, not as much. Doesn't explain it, but I think he'll he'll learn the reverse. In other words, the Gemara says, Hold on, Valahu. According to Rashi, the second Brisa is about Bavel. The first Brisa is about Eretz Yisro. All right, Eretz Yisro. Meaning, the, 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 um, according to Rashbam, rather Rashbam, the second Brisa that says the easterly wind is good, it's good for Bavel, which doesn't produce any rain. But according to the way Tosis learns that the easterly wind produces rain, I think he'll have to say that Halon is speaking about the first brisa, the first brisa that says that the easterly wind is no good, is no good. That's the easterly wind because it brings so much rain for Bavel. And the second brisa is for so he doesn't explain it, but I think that's how you have to learn that Halon Valu is reversed. According to Rashbam, Halon is Bavel. Halon is the second brisa. Lon, Lon, Lon clearly is us, Valu for them. So when he says once for us in bubble, once for the marriage of Israel, he means according to Rashbam, the second brisa is talking about Bavel, the first brisa about Eretz Israel, and according to Tosis, it's reversed. Tanya, Abishol Lomer, Yantav Shalatzeres Borur, some of you have a question on that. If on Shvuas, it's very clear, you have clear skies, that's a good sign for the rest of the year. Yeah, of course, that's the that's already towards the end of the year, but it's a good sign. Okay. Uh, Amrav Zid, Hayu Makama de Reishasa, the first year, first day of the year, Rosh Hashanah. If it's warm, the whole year will be warm. If it's, if it's cool, then the whole year will be cold. I mean, what's the point of telling us that? That, that we should, uh, you know, like you say, are you writing an almanac that you want to write this down if, based on the first day of the year? Let's feel a social coin gadol. The field of the Kohen Gadol. We know the Kohen Gadol prays on Yom Kippur for uh, for the uh, crops and for uh, air, right. That uh, what, what's the lashon? They shouldn't sink down. All those prayers that he does, he'll know how to formulate his prayers. Rashbam says the top Rashbam on the page. should be there. Should be rainfall. The should be warm. The way he sees things in Rosh Hashanah is Pal Yom Kippur. He'll, you know, he'll pray maybe to change it, or he'll pray based on that. That's what his prayers will be formulated by that. So that was all <clears throat> the way we explained that. We're t- going back to Shkumer, we got off on a tangent because of Achitofel's, uh, you know, blessings or advice for his children that he left on his deathbed. His advice. Um, that's what we call. You know, nowhere, to, nowhere does he uh, does, and when he gave his savoir, he doesn't say what he did with his money. I guess if he all he had to do was. Uh, he, he was a big advisor of uh, of Shalom. And, and, pardon? He was a bad advisor. A bad advisor. He was a bad advisor, but you know he didn't have like an entourage. He had to load up his own donkey and schlep home and, and kill himself. You know where does his money? I guess he didn't have much. This is what we call an ethical will. You know when you give advice to your children, like David told Shlomo, make sure this guy doesn't uh, doesn't die in on you know die with his. Um, with his shoes off, as they say, you know, in bed, you know, make sure that he's uh, properly killed. So these are uh, uh, these kinds of advice we find. It's not so much, we don't find, he says, are you going to get this much money? You're going to get that much money. That's, uh, that's sort of sick. We leave it to, to the Torah to decide. These are like uh, wills of instructions. So so that's all we said, that if you hold it, there's a source in the Torah. Like the Torah said, it's an asmachta that we have sukkim indicating the idea of shechid meirah. Uh, but Rabba, um, Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi says the name of Nachman that we said before, if Nachman Rabban Alf said that it's based on the Pasuk of Satem. And here, Rabbi says the name of Nachman, Matan Shechim Rabban Rabban, it's only Rabban Rabban. Rabban, it's simply a Takana Rabban Rabban. We don't want the man who, the man is, 
facing immediate death, whatever the reason, like you say, sickness, about to be killed by the government, about to take his own life, and he knows he's about to die. And if he says, well, if he's afraid, you're not going to listen to him unless uh, he writes it down, and there's Adam, and uh, there's a Kenyan, and all that, he's afraid that his his instructions about the recipients, who's going to get what, will not be adhered to. If he's afraid of that, he might lose his mind. Titraf he might lose his mind, become confused, etc., and uh, and possibly even hasten his death. So because of that, the rabbi said that Shemira, whenever he says this, says more. Rav Nachman really say that. Baham Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman said some of the different gears he takes out the alphagab, but it, this idea is the same alphagab. Damer Shmuel. We've had this before. I have an IOU. Reuben, Reuben has an IOU that Shimon owes him money. And now Reuben wants to sell that to Yankel. He wants to sell the IOU, sell paper. Today we call that you're selling paper. Like what do you have? And you have a bond uh, or a treasury bill or something like that. What is that really? It's an IOU that the government owes you money, right? It's an IOU that you let the government, you lend the, the government money, they owe you money. Now you want to sell that paper to somebody else, right? Well, you're selling the piece of paper. So we like a bearer bond. You actually give it to them. So you can say you're handing it over. But let's say, but 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 the truth is that the paper itself is not the issue. You're not really selling, you're not really giving him the money. You know, the money is gone. The money was spent. You're just selling that stuff. After you sold it, after Ruben sold that IOU to Yankel, he was mochel alone. He still had the Sheba. The Sheba was really from Shimon to Ruben. And because Machlo, Machal, Afil Yorish, even Ruvain's heir can can be Machalit. Even so, we know Modish Shmuel, even though Shmuel says that. And why is that? Why is that? Why can you Machal? So Farsham explained that that Tamsham Machal Chabli Yachalim Chol Nei Shein Shach Lachnas Askufa Mamshel. You can't you can't give him the money. The money's gone. Ruvain gave Shimon the money. Gave him a hundred dollars a month ago. And now Ruvain says, "Okay, the IOU that I have on him, I'm going to sell to Yankel." Can't give you can't give the money. The idea of the Kenyan is simply that the uh that the the Shimon cannot tell Yanko who bought it, you know, La Baldovia of a Shimira. So the point is that he can't really sell it to him, so he still can be mocha. But Shimira, they made it some sumadam, it's as if it was written down and handed over. Uh there, Modishmo back in the Gemara, Modishmo, Shimnasum and the Shimira Dain Yachalim Kebi Mocho. Now that was what Shmuel said. So Rav Nachman quoted Shmuel, even though Shmuel said that if you sell a star of an IU to somebody else, you could still be mochel the loan, right? And mochel takes away the sheep. Now, of course, if he's mochel the loan, he would have to return Yankel's money, right? But the point is the loan itself could be returned because you can't cheat him out of it, right? But 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 still, if a Shimira did that, it's considered a final done, a final done. You can't be mochel it. Yeah, I'm Bishlam the Raisa. If you say it's the Raisa, and even though we're saying the Raisa doesn't really mean the Raisa, but it means it's like an asmach that's based on a Pasuk and a Torah. Mishmach and Yechel, that's why you can't be mochel. Eliyam and Rabbanan, if it's only Rabbanan, like Rav Nachman is maintaining now, Amayin uh, Yechel, why can't it be mochel? Right? It's not, it's only a Rabbanan anyway. And technically, uh, the Shibut still is from Shimon to Ruben. It can be mochel. It says, Ainish Shal Torah, it doesn't, it does, means this. It's not really Minatora, Vasua Kashal Torah. That's the point. When he says it's Rabbanan, and you want to say that it has a that has a it has a the strength of an of a Kenyan of the Torah, it's not Minatora, but they made it. They made it like Torah again, as we said, love, so that he shouldn't uh, be upset. If a man is concerned that his final instructions won't be adhered to, he will get, become confused, uh, discombobulated, and whatever, maybe even hasten his death. Amarava, Amrav Nachman. Shrimira. Now here we're going to see an Indian that. Ashimira, they gave him the power just with his words, as if he wrote it down and handed it over, as if it was a final, a real good Kenyan. However, he can't do more. That all they did was they said, uh, you have the power to make a Kenyan just with your words. However, the kind of Kenyan that you can, the kind of uh, transfer of property can't be any better than that of a Bari. What do we mean by that? So he says like this, Shrimira Sha'amar Yidor Kloni Babayaseh, let this man live in the house. Did he give him the house? Did he rent him the house? Even rent or a lease is like a partial sale. If I rent you my apartment for a year, I sold it to you for a year, basically. You have to pay the Arnone, you got to pay the electric, the it's, it's your apartment for the year. I can't come and take it away. I sold it to you for a year. So there I sold you the apartment. If he says, listen, let this guy live in the apartment for a year, no. Or he says, Yochel Ploni, Peyrus Dekelze, 
or let this guy eat the fruits and whatever grows in the crop there, let him let him eat those cru- uh, uh, those fruits from this tree. Lower Maklum, it doesn't mean anything. Even though we said Shemir has a power, Achiyomer, until he says, Snubai is Eloplani Vidabar, give him the house for a year. Let him have the house for a year. Or Tnu Dekel's Eloplani, give him the tree, Vioko Parasim, he'll be able to eat the tree. As we said, because he, we hold the mice and not like a mayor, right? Not like a Bekiva a mayor holds that you can make the Vashaba Olam. And you can't give somebody something which is not here. I can't give you fruits that are going to grow. I can give you the tree so that you can eat the fruits that are going to grow. I can I can lend you the tree, give you the tree, rent you the tree, lease you the tree, but I can't give you something that's not here. So if I say something like, you could stay in the apartment, I'm not giving you anything. It's not something, it's not the Dabashiesh Bamamish. It's not a concrete item. It's it's a schus that you can't do. Uh, a bari can't do that either. He can't do, you know, he can allow him to come in there, but it's worse don't mean anything unless he actually rented him the house he to live in it. He can lease it. At least it means I'm giving you the house. And, sublease, in other words. Well, you, you, you sublease it, lease it, whatever you want. He could he could lease the house. But he, if I just say, if the Shemura says, let him live in the house, and he didn't give him the house. If he says, rent him the house, for, or give him the house, give him the house for a year, or give him the house forever, give him the house to live in, that's that's like he, he gifted him the house. But if he said, let him live in the house, that's not the same. He's not giving him anything. So and Abari can't do that either. So uh, Shemir only has the advantage that his words are like it's written down and handed over. But uh, uh, but even if it's written down and handed over, but he didn't give him anything. He just said, let him have the rights to, to, uh, to live in the house. It's like, uh, that's not giving him anything. And the same thing with the tree. It's like a Dabr Shalom. Rashbam says, Taking the Rashbam about 10 lines from the bottom of the page in the Rashbam, the Divri Maschil, Omar of Nachman, maybe 12 lines. Omar of Nachman, Shimmer Shah Ami Yidra Poli Mabaisa, Yochum Pan Mersesek, Loma Klum, Shadira Ainba Mamash, La Knosa. The Dira living in the house is not giving him something. That's just an ability to live there. That's not giving him a house. U Peris Dekel Nami, Ain Ada Makta Dabash Lobo, you can't give him something. Keep in the Matnas Bari, I feel the Kenyan Sudra, even the Kenyan Lokani. The Milo Mikni El Im Kain Hikno Chevsi. So you have to give him something. Gagon, I'm giving you a tree for the fruits. Oh, bias, I'm giving you the house, renting the house, leasing the house, subleasing the house. So, you know, gift whatever it is. Bias Lador Matnas Shkiver Nami Lokani. The Milsa the Lesser Mabari Lesser Bishkimra. Something that a Bari can't do with a contract and with with a Kenyan. A shkimera can't do. Shkimera chomer menabari. He's not. He doesn't have any greater strength than bari. Ella. The only difference is dami rasa b'makom kinyan. Just saying something makes a kinyan. B'makom kinyan shall bari you. Be'echad ein kinyan more else b'bari. But if a kinyan wouldn't help for a bari, I mean b'shkimera namelam. In other words, even if a bari says uh, you can live in my house for a year, that's not giving him anything. That doesn't mean anything. What do you mean with mas? Are you giving the house? You're not giving him the house. Giving him the house, you're a guest in my house. He can let him come in, but there's no that doesn't mean anything. And the guy says, "Oh, whenever you're in town, stay with me." <laughs> and then when you show up, I'm not home now. You know, it's worth money. In other words, you tell somebody that you can stay in the house and you can bring it, it, somebody else in there. Yeah, say, no, no, but but he, he, it, it's it's ineffective. Just saying something. This saying somebody. It's like I get if I give you the fruits that are growing growing this tree. And they're not here now. It's good. It's good. They're going to grow later on. It's meaningless. I can't give it to you. The same way, I can't give you the right to, sl- to sleep in my house. I can rent you the house. I can give you the house. I can lease you the house. I'm giving you something. But I can't give you the ability to stay in my house. That doesn't. That's not a Kenyan. It's ineffective. The whole concept is ineffective. You can lease them. You can say, you know, come and stay. You know, you can have my house whenever you want. It's yours. The house is yours at your disposal. But to say you can live in the house, that's not a Kenyan. That's ineffective. If he's already in the house as a guest, and a person says, stay in my house, I've already said. Yeah. Is that, is that a Kenyan? No. No, no. no. So he has to give him the house. house. He has to give him the house. He has to give him the house or give him the house. Just get, staying in the house is meaningless. Ineffective. Behechad and Kenyan Mo, I'm continuing on in the Rosh Baham, four lines from the bottom of Rosh Baham. Behechad and Kenyan Mo, I'm here, but Shemar also doesn't help me. Hilkach, Ain Mo, I Shemar, and Nazi says, give him the house. Or rent him the house, or lease him the house. Uh, it says the, back in the Gemara now. Uh, so fourth, the fourth line from the bottom of the page in the Gemara. Something that a bari could do with a Kenyan, a shkimira can do without a Kenyan, right? 
Mils, right? Bishimra. The lesser of Bari. If a Bari can't do that, like we said, it's ineffective. Lesser of Shimira. That's not. I, Vamrab Nachman, Vamrab Nachman, Shimira. We said, is that really true? Vamrab Nachman, Shimira, Shamar, Tnuha, Vaasi, Leploni, give my loan. Again, the Shimira is Ruven. And he says, the loan that Shimon owes me, give it to Yankel. Havaso Leplon. It, goes, it works. Bafa got the lesser Bari. That doesn't work by a Bari. You can't just give it over with words. It's got to be a real Kenyan, etc. So why do you say that something works by a Bari works by a Shimura, Something doesn't work by a Bari does not work by a Shimura. Here, Shimura is able to hand over a loan to somebody, which apparently a Bari cannot just do by saying by saying something like that. Rashbam says at the top of the page, moment you have Leplon with Melva, Melva Alpe. That he owes me, and he knows Lepo. I'm giving it here from Lepo. Let the Loba pay him. Let Shimon pay him. Call me. The sky with Varum. The tail of the Leploni. I forgot the Bari Lessa. Then Yochel Akdus Chavero Milva Alpe. You can't say the 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 Milva Alpe. The Lord saw it. Now the Ein Kenyan Tofus. A little bit of a You can only make a kin of something which is here. Elam came out. Elam can unless he did it. Milva Bishda unless it was an IOU alone. The Gon Shemusal Oshdar gave him the IOU. In that Mamet Shloshni, like we're going to say later on. So the Gemara's answer is, so here the you see something that a Shemira can do something that uh, that a Bari cannot do. So the Gemara, no. Rapap Amar, no. Hol v'yorish yorsha. That's not true. The Bari could do it also. If a man dies, if let's say Ruvain was owed $100 by Shimon with a Nova al pet, and Ruvain dies, his son, Hanoch, gets it. So since he acquires it that way, so it does apply by a Bari also. And as we stand fast, we say, Whatever a Bari could do, a Shemira could do just by saying the words. But if a Bari can't affect the Kenyan, the, uh, the Shemira cannot do that either. So he said, Lahore here, the Shemira can transfer over a verbal IOU to somebody else, even though a Bari cannot. The answer is no, a Bari can also buy a Yerusha. Rav Achabre, the Rikis says, no, even with a loan, also it works. Amr Hava, east of a Bari, works for Bari. Ukarafuna Marav, Damarafuna Marav. The famous case is one of the three cases that the Rabbanan said without a reason, but just because the Rabbanan felt that that's how things are, right? That if a, one of those things was, if a man writes all his assets over to his wife and ignores the children, he didn't really need to give it to her, he just made to make her an apotropis. That was one of the three. Another one of the three is, Reuben says to Shimon, you know, you owe me $100, to the pony, give it to Levi. Three people who are not related, right? Reuben is owed $100 by Shimon. Three people are standing, Reuben, Shimon, Levi. He says, oh, you know what? The money that you owe me, give it to him. That works. It's a special There was no special kenyan, no suter. He just said it that way. So here also, so you see that it does work by a bari. A bari works in this fashion with maimit shloshan. That's the famous kenyan. Maimit shloshan works. It happened. Why did the rabbanon say that? Because it's a very common occurrence. People are in the marketplace. They say, oh, you know, you owe me hundred dollars rather than you know, uh, you bid it to me and I have to transfer it to you. The money that you owe me. You just pay him directly. And that's how, so it does work. What works by a bar, it works by a shumira. The advantage of a shumira is only that he doesn't have to make a special kinyan. When he gave everything away, when he gave everything away. If he gave partial away, the difference is also it works after he died. But the difference is if he gave partial away and the person made a kinyan on it, even if the man survives, even if the shumira survives, it still acquires it. If he gave everything away, as we said, and then he survives, then the whole deal is off. All right, we'll pick it up here tomorrow. Eboy Lumis. Have a good day. Okay.